Hello everyone, this is Rick and welcome to Astral Club. This is, are you ready for astral projection? Before we get into it, just want to mention Patreon. If you'd like to join Patreon and support the work here of Astral Club, you can do so by going down to the description and clicking the link there. When you join, you get commercial-free advanced episodes on Sunday, a library of downloaded episodes for your podcast app, and a Patreon email where we can talk back and forth. Uh, lastly, private lessons. If you'd like to listen uh, just one-on-one -on -one to uh, learn about Astral Projection, be more than glad to work with you. All you have to do is go to the description and you'll see an email there, and just ask for more information on lessons. Okay, let's get started. Now, the source material that I'm going to use for this one here is The Projection of the Astral Body by Sylvan Muldoon. This is one of my, this is one of my favorite books. I would say it's probably my second favorite, right after Journeys Out of the Body by Robert Monroe. And keep in mind, this book was written well before Journeys Out of the Body. It was written in the 20s. And Sylvan Muldoon, the way he just describes his projections, everything rings true. All the little stuff that as somebody who just read about it would miss, wouldn't get. This guy really did it. And there's one particular area here that I find particularly true, because this is also, of course, based on my experience and how it matched up here with with uh, Sylvan Muldoon's. He believed, and his language is, is a little bit old-fashioned because it was written in the 20s, but he believed in the uh, dynamization of the astral body, um, dynamizing the mind. What he meant by that is when you go to sleep, if you just ease on off to sleep, not thinking about anything in particular, your subconscious mind will grab upon some trauma or something somewhere along the line and start generating dreams for you. However, if you go to sleep with a burning desire of wishing to consciously astral project, and you get to a point where both your conscious and your subconscious are on board, there will be certain things that will happen to you that will be um, indicative of the fact that you are well and truly prepared mentally to astral project. So what are some of those things that Sylvan Muldoon talks about? He said, first of all, you should dream of projecting out of your astral body. Uh, I agree with that 100%. Uh, I, I know when I, um, whenever I astral projected, especially during periods when I did it a lot, I would also have dreams of doing it. Uh, essentially, what that, what a dream is about astral projection, typically, is this, is if you have accomplished that dy dynamized. <laughs> my goodness, if you've accomplished that dynamization of your your mental faculties about astral projection, then you're going to start dreaming about it. And, and you'll be able to tell it's not a real projection because it has, it'll have a lot of dream elements associated with it. I don't want to get into that, but you will begin dreaming about it. That's one, that's one indicator. Next up, he says, you should, <laughs> you should somnambulate physically. He's talking about walking in your sleep. Uh, that actually happened to me when I was a kid. I did it twice. Now, I would say that of these symptoms, that, that one's probably the, uh, the least likely to happen, I find. But, you know, it, it would be indicative very much so of, of a unconscious will that is um, ready to astral project. Number three, you should awaken in the night with the desire upon your mind. So when you wake up from your sleep, the first thought should be, about conscious astral projection. Lastly, he says you should experience a conscious projection. So these are some of the indicators, like the first three here really, that you have gone to the point where you, you have prepared your conscious and, and subconscious mind for astral projection. If you're not experiencing any of these things, and you don't have to experience all three of them. Quite frankly, if you start experiencing any one of those three, 
then I would say that you're well on your way to an actual uh, projection. Now, uh, Muldoon goes on to say, if none of these um, things occurs, there is but one explanation. Either you only imagine that you've you know, dynamized your mind uh, or you're experiencing unconscious astral projections. And that's true. Many of us do experience unconscious astral projections. I call them sleepwalkers. That was the name I gave them when I was a kid. I'd see people walking around um, and I could tell they, they still had a cord, but they were unconscious. So, you know, maybe you've gotten that far where now you've, you're unconsciously astral projecting. Um, but at least that's an indicator that you're on your way. And perhaps even if you're doing an unconscious projection, you might have some residual memories if you really think about it. You might even have a residual memory of falling back into your body and, and waking up, for instance. Um, now, he also goes on to say that, um, yes, first you should dream of the projection of the astral body. And, and if you find yourself lucid within that dream, we've talked about that in the past, about how you can seize, you can jump off a high building and uh, wish, to, wish to leave your body, will, will yourself to leave your body. Or you can open up a hole in that reality and go through it wishing to leave your body. Um, Muldoon goes on to talk about uh, a very interesting technique which he used when he was having trouble projecting. And, and this is what he recommended if nothing else was working for you. If you weren't having any of those, uh, those characteristics, for instance, of somebody who's ready to project. He says, as you're falling asleep, tell yourself that you're going to wake up at 3 a.m., or 3.15 a.m. And say that over and over again. Picture yourself doing that and see if you can achieve that. If you do, great. Because once you have achieved that, then you will start finding yourself only partially awake and still your body in a paralyzed or what he would say somnambulic state which is the perfect place from which to astral project. In other words, what we're trying to do here is to cause part of your conscious mind to wake up while, let's say, your body might still be in the middle of a dream state, which is the perfect situation. Mind awake, body asleep. Now, that's something that I tried in the past and it worked for me. However, if you don't have that ability... What you might want to do if you're really dedicated is set your alarm clock for 3 a.m. or 3.15 a.m. or whatever. And do it for at least two weeks because they say it takes about, you know, two weeks to actually make something a habit. And then stop doing it sometimes. You know what I'm saying? Like, don't set it one night and see what happens. What might happen, and this, and like I said, I actually did this for myself. What you might happen is your alarm clock doesn't go off, but you still become aware at 3 a.m. or 3.15 a.m. in the middle of the night while your body is still in that paralytic state. So at that point in time, then you can choose to float out or roll out or whatever, you know, if you want to sink down into the bed, you want to, whatever you want to do. It's, uh, it's up to your dealer's choice at that point in time. But that's one of the ways that you can kind of manipulate this, this desire, this stress. Because he was big on the word stress here as well. Uh, because what you want to accomplish here is uh, you've got this stressor, which after doing this for a couple of weeks... The stressor has been established, and it should cause you to achieve some level of alertness. Now, you might, it might, you might come completely awake at 3.15, which won't necessarily help you, although you could always use that as an excuse to go empty your bladder, uh, have a drink of water, and then go back to bed um, while telling yourself that now that you're rested, 
you will consciously leave your astral body. That's, you know, that's another technique you can use should this fail. But the idea here is by alternating, setting it, not setting it, you're, you're going to create this stress. So if that alarm clock doesn't go off at 3.15 or 3 a.m., there's still this stress that's going to come up in your consciousness. And that may be precisely what you need to realize that your body is asleep, but your mind has come awake because it is so used to doing so. And now you're in the perfect position to will yourself to leave your body. Okay, that's just a, a short one that I, I wanted to share. I've got some uh, other interesting episodes coming up next week. Um, but if you like that, please hit the like button, share it with those of like minds. Subscribe if you haven't already. And questions and comments, have you ever used techniques like this? Uh, you know, this isn't, this isn't the first time anyone's ever thought of these techniques. They've been around for a while, but, you know, good old Sylvan Muldoon. Love that book, Projection, uh, The Projection of the Astral Body. Okay, uh, this is Rick, and as always, I will see you on the astral plane.